A proposed safety tax was turned down by the Macon County voters, leaving the Macon County Sheriff's Office at a disadvantage. The university has an adequate supply of salts on hand. Its brine solution is used for pre-treatment for roads, sidewalks, and parking lots. While the NTFC is still fighting to try to get a fair education out of the University of Illinois, a new survey shows many Americans do not know the VP nominees. Many students consider Eras as someone they could trust, someone they could always rely on, and most importantly, a good friend. As you stepped outside this morning, you probably noticed the gray skies and felt the very chilly temperatures, but unfortunately, the cold weather is here to stay. An epidemic of addiction is growing in DeWitt County, a heroin overdose. Hillary Clinton faces a 17% drop regarding her chances winning presidency. The situation is still under investigation. Police say to report any suspicious items to your local law enforcement agency. Mitchell Gomez says it was a little awkward seeing his instructor on the other side of the picket line. I'm standing at the University of Illinois bookstore where they just cut the grand opening ribbon for the new edition of Amazon. Construction begins this week and union labor will complete 70% of the work. Lauren Hicks, WAND News. Bell rings and then there's a fire. That's right, when the bell rings, there's a fire. Let's Community members came to Marketplace Mall to learn more about fire safety than how to just stop, drop and roll. Firefighters say that everyday housekeeping is one of the best ways to avoid a fire. By reducing clutter, you are unconsciously decreasing your chances of a fire outbreak in your home. While firefighters' jobs involve dangerous risks, Jeremy Mitchell says they try to remember the funny moments to help them deal with the nature of their work. He shares how he spent his birthday pulling a man out of a fire for the first time. Once we got it put out, came to find out it was a toaster oven, that it started the fire and there were pizza rolls at it. And uh, the paramedics were telling me while I was inside with the fire, they gave the, the man I dragged out some oxygen and the first thing he asked about was his pizza rolls. While cooking incidents are the main cause of fires in Champaign-Urbana, Susan Dunn came home to see a more traumatic situation at her neighbor's house. The man that lived next door to me um, killed his mom and killed himself and then set the house on fire. Or set the house on fire. Dunn expresses how thankful she is towards firefighters and how much they helped during this tragedy. They were really there quickly and took care of it. And we're lucky to have them, right, Dash? We're lucky to have firefighters, right? <coughs> On average, seven people die in U.S. home fires per day. The Champaign Fire Department gives the community tips and fire prevention methods to stay safe. Get out if you can't fight the fire know how to notify the fire department, which in Champaign is 911 or 9911 if you're in a, in a campus building. But then also where you live, if you live with a family or if you have roommates, make sure that you have a place to meet outside. In Champaign, Lauren Hicks, UI7 News. Go ahead and step through that door from right there. She'll get your ballot for you. Thank you. The Champaign County Clerk's Office has helped inform and motivate people to vote through word of mouth, social media, digital advertising, postcards, and emails. Despite these efforts, some people are still left unconvinced. Angela Bigham shares why she is unmotivated to get to the polls. On social media, they're portraying Hillary and Trump both as bad guys. Um, I think people should vote for me. <laughs> I will run this country. Social media allows candidates an alternative way outside of debates and campaigns to show how they could better the country. However, Marco Sinclair does not have a Facebook and doesn't use media as an influence. His motivation to vote was driven from the way his family has raised him. My parents have always been really politically active. Even though my dad's a Canadian citizen and can't vote, uh, my mom has always brought it up at the dinner table. And it's something that we still talk about to this day, our voting habits, why we're voting for people, um, sort of down the ballot list. It's always been something that's been a part of our family. Champaign County Clerk Gordy Halton says there are very few legitimate excuses for not voting. There's no reason it's too difficult. There's no reason it's too inconvenient. There's no reason it's too time consuming. It is incredibly easy. As of right now, Halton says that Champaign County has at least 20,000 early votes in and they are expected to reach at least 30 to 35,000 votes before Election Day. Nobody likes living a life where other people get to make decisions for you. And when you abstain from voting, that's what you're doing. Voters can begin casting their ballots at 6 a.m. on Election Day. In Urbana, Lauren Hicks, UI7 News. I'm here on the quad where in about an hour there will be a candlelight vigil held behind me to support and pray for those that were involved in this weekend's tragedy. Several hundred people are expected to show up to remember George Korchev and others that were wounded. Korchev was visiting graduate student Eric Lassane. He was shot in the back. 
Lesane shows his appreciation for the university's effort in tonight's vigil. Uh, I think it's awesome because there was a car accident that killed one of my other friends uh, last year, and they had a vigil for him. And so, like, having having a vigil for one of my oldest friends is really nice and, like, very thoughtful. Student body president Ron Lewis organized tonight's vigil and wants students to feel safe. This is just the beginning. Like I said, this is just to bring students together and make sure that no one feels isolated or endangered during this period of time. So that's why we had the vigil to make sure that everyone knows that we're still together and we should still stand together during this tragedy. The vigil is expected to start at 7 o'clock, put on by the Illinois Student Senate. That's all we have from the quad. Back to you guys.